Hello friends. In today's lecture, I will discuss about the income elasticity of demand and the cross elasticity of demand. In the previous lecture, I have already discussed the elasticity of demand and the price elasticity of demand. So, what happens in this case is that with the increase or decrease in the income of the consumer, the quantity demanded by the consumer also increases or decreases respectively. That extent or the proportionate change in the quantity demanded along with the change in the income of the consumer is called income elasticity of demand. An important point to be noted here is that income and elasticity of demand is having the positive relationship. Why? Because we have already <coughs> seen that uh, unlike the uh, price and demand relationship and the uh, income and uh, demand relationship is positive because with increase in the income, the consumers tend to increase their demand for the commodities, uh, quantity of a particular commodity. Now, uh, this gives us the direction that the income and demand will be going in the positive direction means both will increase and decrease together but the extent to which there will be the responsiveness of change in the quantity demanded with the change in the income is the subject matter of income elasticity of demand. The measurement of the income elasticity of demand is given by the formula which is given here which is percentage change in the quantity demanded for a commodity x when divided by percentage change in the income. So, if you, uh, if you remember the formula for the price elasticity of demand, the formula for this income elasticity of demand is also same, only in place of the price of the commodity, now we have substituted income. So, the proportionate change in the quantity demanded has to be divided by the proportionate change in income and that will give us the absolute figure of the income elasticity or the coefficient of income elasticity. Now, uh, there are uh, degrees of income elasticity as there was degree of price elasticity. The, these degrees are again divided into main four, uh, five main um, um, uh, portion. The first three, if you look at the, uh, if you look at the first three, One, we will see that these are the cases of positive income elasticity. This one, this one, and this one. In all of these cases, income elasticity is greater than one equal to one, uh, less than one. But these are all positive. This happens in the case of the normal goods. Okay, when the income elasticity is positive. It means the goods are categorized as normal goods. Okay. Of course, these are all consumer goods. And when the income elasticity is negative, which is only one case, in this case, the good, uh, these commodities are referred to as inferior quality commodity. Okay. Uh, okay. So, basically, we divide the goods into two categories. Now, among the normal goods, there are various categories of goods. So, in this section, we will basically study the income elasticity of demand and its uh, relation with the type of the commodity. What happens in case of normal goods, the income elasticity remains positive means as the income increases, it will positively impact the quantity demanded means quantity demanded will also increase. Now, it has to be seen how much that quantity demanded with increase will increase with the increase in the income. So, if you look at this first panel or this first case where the income elasticity is greater than when it is called high elastic demand, what happens that with the change in the income, slight change in income from Y to Y1, the quantity demanded has increased, I mean a double fold from Q to Q1. You can just look at the graph and see the distance between this is the distance increase in, in the income and this is 
the increase in the quantity. Both are increasing, it is positive, but the in proportionate increase in the quantity is quite high than the proportionate increase in the income. Means if income is increasing, say, by 5%, uh, then we can clearly see here that the quantity demanded is increasing more than uh, 5%. So that is why right. the income elasticity coefficient is greater than 1 in case, in this case. And these are the case of luxury goods. These generally the kind of commodity for which we can see this phenomena uh, are uh, the luxury goods or the goods uh, which, which are uh, you know high end quality goods generally um, consumer consume them for their you know um, luxury uh, luxuriousness. Second case is of unitary elastic demand where the change in the income, we, we can see this in the second panel, the change in the income, increase in the income and the increase in the quantity demanded is almost same. So, it, when uh, in, uh, the income, uh, with the increase in the income, we will uh, increase the consumption for certain goods. These kind of goods are called comfort goods. Means we can say all those white goods, we can say the goods that we use at our home like refrigerator, um, uh, TV and all of these things. Uh, say we have uh, already these things at home but if our income increases or doubles, we go for the newer ones or the better brands. Sometimes we wait for increase in our income and uh, once we have increased in, uh, our income and we are able to save enough because these goods are not uh, very costly. Uh, so, uh, it, in these types of goods it happens that generally we see that uh, with increase the, in the income the quantity demanded increase almost in the same um, proportion. And third is the case of low elasticity demand where the with the increase in the income, the quantity demanded also increases, but not as much as there is the proportionate change in the income. Means income has increased from Y to Y1, but and quantity has increased from Q to Q1. Again, if you look at the distance covered between Y to Y1 and the distance between Q to Q1, you can it's quite visible from here only that the income, the distance from Y to Y1 is much more than the distance between Q to Q1 means the change in the quantity demanded is lesser than the change in the income that is why in this case the income elasticity is lesser than 1 means this happens in case of essential goods these are the goods which we need which are very important and indispensable we cannot go without them but these are not the things that you desire you just need them because you need them. Okay, like uh, in case of you know a refrigerator or even um, household other household products, uh, white goods, uh, televisions and all because of the changes in their newer models and some new features, mobile phone, laptops also you can say uh, which is not very high end mobile or very high end laptop where the uh, in case of average category of these products. Uh, we um, desire to keep on changing and it gives us comfort and also um, satis we simply desire it. So, in that case we can see with increase in income we would tend to increase our consumption of those goods. But in case of essential goods, these are simply essential things, these are not something which we desire like uh, normal groceries, you know. Uh, we need it to survive, but it's not like that we would consume it more. We are, uh, uh, for example, if somebody has certain uh, diet and if the cost of the grocery of a household is to a certain extent, it's not that with the increased income they are going to double up their diet. No, they are going to eat more food than the average that they were already eating. So, they, it, it will almost remain same. Uh, so, there won't be much uh, <coughs> increase in the demand for such commodities. So, basically what happens when your income increases, you go on to purchase comfort goods, luxury goods, not these essential goods.
okay so your income your budget you shift to these kind of goods but at the same time the demand for these essential goods will not be negative or less it will remain constant so because the quantity demanded for these kind of commodity will remain constant your income will increase but quantity demanded will not increase that is why it will be less than one okay and then we have the fourth case in which the quantity is this is called zero elastic demand in this panel we can see there is no elasticity even if there is increase in the income you are not going to increase the quantity demanded even a little bit these are again uh, the normal goods but they may be essential and another category of essential which is we can say necessity good what happens in this kind of good these are again just very important but important to the extent that you are not going to uh, you simply cannot consume them much more for example salt very very basic kind of thing okay then we have the fifth and the final category which in which case the income elasticity is negative this is an important case what happens here with the increase in the income your quantity demanded for such kind of product decreases and this is one of the exception basically of income elasticity because income elasticity income and demand has a positive relationship but in this case it is not positive it is negative now why if this happen because these kind of goods are called inferior goods the nature of these commodities is such that the consumer want to uh, substitute these goods with the higher or the better quality goods when they have much more income to dispense so if you have more money you would like to uh, you know hire a, an auto instead of going to your workplace by bus so this is just one example so you are substituting a better service for a service bus service which is a bit inferior because uh, it is giving you less comfort okay and also we take the case of food grains like you go for a better quality uh, food grains wheat and rice instead of using a normal or the inferior quality of wheat and rice when you have better uh, more income so the substitution effect effect is seen here these are the degrees of income elasticity and how they are related to the various kinds of commodity has been explained okay this income elasticity is very helpful to the manager how because if once the manager knows that if the income or the general like gnp is increasing so they will think that okay uh, the uh, the consumption will increase the quantity demanded will increase but they have to look at the kind of commodity or the uh, products services they are selling or their firm is selling because <coughs> uh, the general level of increase in the income is not going to translate into increase in the consumption if they have to look at these commodities their nature and then only they can see the impact of the increase in the income or then on their commodity okay so with this income elasticity uh, is uh, done now the last and the final topic is the cross elasticity of demand what happens in this case um, what is cross elasticity basically cross elastic cross elasticity of demand is when there is a change in the Uh, quantity demanded due to the change in the price of the substitute goods means there will be change in the quantity demanded for product x due to the change in the price of the commodity y okay so here we are dealing with the quantity of one product and prices of something else another product now what are the related goods or other products it is further categorized into substitute goods and complementary goods we have already discussed the case of cross demand in the previous lecture now uh, in case of substitute goods what happens substitute goods are those kind of goods which can be substituted for one another so what happens in this case if the price of say commodity 
x let's take example of coffee and tea if the price of the coffee is increasing the people or the consumer will switch to consuming tea so what will happen the price of tea is increasing here the quantity demanded for um, price of coffee see co coffee is increasing so the quantity demanded for tea will increase why because the consumer are switching to this tea instead of consuming coffee they will start consuming tea so here definitely the quantity demanded for coffee will decrease but we are not talking about the quantity demanded of coffee anymore we are discussing quantity demanded of tea so that is why uh, price of coffee increase quantity demanded of tea increase that is why increase increase and that is why it is positive relationship okay you can see this in this graph in this first panel where Uh, we can see the price is increasing for x and quantity is increasing for y and that is why we have an upward sloping demand curve positive demand curve okay elasticity of demand is greater than zero in case of complementary goods reverse happens the price these are the goods which are used together so you can say um, car and um, and needle and thread okay so if the price of the um, let's say car and um, uh, petrol so um, if the price for the petroleum is going high the price of petrol is increasing so generally we take this hypothetical example that people will stop using their car for that period so consumption of the car or the sale of the car will decrease so quantity demanded of the car will decrease so price of a commodity increasing the quantity of another commodity is decreasing so what is happening here increase decrease inverse relationship okay that is why the relationship between uh, the the cross elasticity of demand here is negative because the relation is coming out to be negative and uh, we have this in the second panel and we can see the downward sloping demand curve and demand elasticity of demand for complementary goods is less than zero so in case of cross elasticity of demand we have two cases substitute goods and the complementary goods in case of substitute goods uh, the positive relationship is there in case of complementary goods negative relationship is there and it is very important for students to remember that here we are discussing about the price and the quantity but the price of one commodity and the quantity of other related commodity measurement is simple but only thing is that here we are discussing the percentage change in the quantity of product x divided by the percentage change in the price of commodity y or again quantity of x and price of y so this is the cross elasticity of demand i hope this is clear and with this uh, our section of analysis of market demand is completed uh, thank you